Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's painting, we're gonna paint this beach scene and it's a really simple composition, a really simple beach scene. And this is more for you to get comfortable with your blending, comfortable with mixing your paint. And I want you to do this painting kind of quickly. I don't want you to stress over it. It's like I said, not a super involved or complex painting but it's geared for you to just get comfortable with your tools and the process of painting. So what you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting. So click on the link, check out what you need to acquire and grab your extra materials. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image, that initial composition on your canvas before you even start painting. And for my first time painters, this is a really good tool to utilize to kind of take out some of that beginning stress of painting. There's also a video on how to transfer your traceable. So check both of those out. Um, with this painting and any painting that I teach, especially for my first time painters, be kind to yourself. You are gonna do better than you think you're capable of and you're a lot more creative than you realize. So again, be nice to yourself as you go through this painting. When you're ready to paint something that you care about and kind of take your skills to the next level by painting your pet, you will impress yourself and the class is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So like I said, when you're ready, check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com and you will see all the paint your pet courses you pick it based on the color of your pet and then go through the course but like i said you will learn a lot and it is geared towards beginner and first time painters so let's see enough talking be kind to yourself as we go through the process and let's get started painting All right, guys, so hope you're ready to paint, get all your supplies together. This is gonna be a fun painting. Um, perfect for my first time painters. Do make sure you turn on your favorite music and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So once you've got your traceable transferred to your canvas, you've got two options here and I do recommend option number one. I want you to take the small pointy brush and black paint and go over each of those lines that you transferred to your canvas. And as you go over it with the brush, I want you to play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure will make smaller lines where a little more pressure is gonna make some wider lines. This is excellent practice for your brush control and your muscles are learning a lot right now. If you are short on time, you do have option number two where you can use a black Sharpie marker and go over the outlines and then move into painting. But I do recommend going with option number one just because it is good practice for you. All right, once you have your outlines um, done, you do want to pause the video and take your progress photo. And we're gonna start with our background and work forward. So we're going with light blue. So you can see I pulled some of that white aside, added a tiny amount of blue to it to make a light blue. And we're gonna start at our horizon line and fill in the space from that horizon line towards the top of the canvas, filling in all that space. And if you have to make your color a second or third time, don't stress about it, because here you can see that as I've grabbed more color, I grab more white. So it gets a little bit lighter as I'm moving towards the top of the canvas. If you have some variation in your background, that's totally okay, and it is to your benefit. You'll see in a moment where we're gonna add paint on top of um, our background color, and we'll do a little bit of wet on wet blending. So again, you're just getting really good practice with getting comfortable with your brush. All right, so here we go, adding a little bit more blue to our mixture to go a little bit darker and then applying that to our wet cam our wet paint on the canvas at the top of the canvas. And I'm using light pressure as I blend that first color in with that medium blue. And again, this is called a wet on wet blending method. 
If you're one of my first time painters, make sure you take a deep breath. And again, pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're just gonna move our way down the canvas. We're making a medium blue, so we're going darker than what we were just using. So I want you to go a little bit darker than what you made your last blue shade to be. And we're gonna fill in this top section. And this is actually our horizon line where the ocean is meeting the sky and kind of the first set of waves coming in as they're crashing on the shoreline. And we're gonna be building on our skills. So we're gonna kind of take each section, each section and do the same thing where we're gonna put a base color on there and then we'll introduce a darker or lighter color on top of it and do some blending. So again, if you're one of my first time painters, this is excellent practice as you get comfortable with the brushes, comfortable with your pressure, comfortable mixing your paint and even doing some blending. All right, so here I moved down to the small pointy brush and grabbed white paint and kind of threw some across. You're thinking that these are the waves coming in. And again, just kind of look at the placement that I put them on the canvas and mimic that as close as you can. It does not have to be perfect. I am using light pressure on my brush and trying to keep some of that distinct whiteness so I'm not blending it in entirely into the background. All right, so still using that pointy brush, you're gonna grab some straight blue paint and right underneath where we put that white, we're gonna put some of that straight blue to create a little bit of a shadow underneath these waves that are rolling in. So I placed some of that blue underneath the white, then I wiped my brush off and went back and with very light pressure, um, just kind of blended a little bit of that into my base paint. And this doesn't have to be perfect at all. This is just giving the illusion of depth. And now I'm making a lighter blue and moving to the next section. So we're gonna be going lighter and lighter as our water is coming into the coastline. Filling in that full space with that light blue. Now taking some of that dark blue and again, giving a hint of where some of our waves are coming in. Whoops, need to grab a little more, there we go. So grabbing some of that straight blue and putting it underneath where one of those black lines were from earlier. And then also kind of on the edge at the front. And again, not moving my brush a whole lot, keeping some of that distinct bold color. And this has helped creating that illusion of depth as we paint this landscape. And I forgot to mention it earlier, but you are a magician today. You're creating a nice illusion of space on a flat surface. All right, and now making a lighter blue, so white with just a tiny amount of blue in there, filling in the next section of our waves that are rolling in. And again, if you're painting over those black lines, totally okay. You can add them again at the end or not at all, and I don't add them um, a second time at the end of the painting. All right, so here we're actually grabbing some of that light blue area uh, a little further down that coastline and I did accidentally pick up some of the darker blue that might happen to you uh, you can wipe it off with a paper towel or just kind of work it into the color that you're currently working on again you do not have to copy what I'm doing exactly this is just a slight guideline but you have full permission to kind of make this your own and change it so again back to that small pointy brush the blue paint paint and putting the hint of this shadow in where these waves are rolling into our coastline. Nice and here I wanted a little bit of a darker space so I just kind of threw some of that blue in there and we're blending it there we go into that wave section. Again you're getting just excellent practice with playing with your brushes, playing with the pressure, getting comfortable with mixing your paint. Um, this is, this is a, a process of perfections overrated, but you do get more comfortable with more practice. All right, so actually grabbing some of that white, making my light blue a little bit lighter as it's rolling in over into the coastline. 
and up into the sand. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture, and we're gonna move into our sand color. So you're gonna start with white, add a tiny amount of raw sienna, and a tiny amount of yellow. And on the plate, you can see I have actually too much yellow, so I grabbed more white and adjusted my color. But we're going for a really light hint of some warm sand color. Again, we're gonna be kind of filling in this full space, and then we're gonna add some more colors on top of it with the wet on wet blending. So you're doing a great job. Remember to breathe and relax. If you have to mix your shade of sand a second time, don't stress, it's actually great practice if you have to mix your color two and three times. And again, does not have to be the exact same color as what you were just using. As long as it's within range, that is acceptable. All right, so here I'm actually adding more of that raw sienna into that mixture. And that last little section of where the water's kind of overlapping the sand, we're going just a little bit darker because the wet water would actually make the sand a little bit darker in real life. And going over those black marker lines or paint lines from the beginning and just kind of blending this darker shade into our base sand color. You're doing great. It's coming along nicely. You should be very proud of yourselves. I'm proud of you. All right, so now we're going to grab some of that white. I'm going to kind of put it under the base of the mountains and kind of hugging that shape, that curve shape as the water's reaching forward on the sand. Now grabbing some yellow. This step's optional. I like bold colors, so I think that's why I threw it in there. But just kind of sparingly throw some yellow on there and then take your progress photo and pause the video. Now we're gonna use just that raw sienna by itself, moving into our mountains, our cliffs on our horizon line. And again, just giving a hint that we have this nice rock formation and depth at our horizon line. So I'm in that middle uh, medium flat brush using just the straight raw sienna and again applying it kind of thick because I am using student grade paint and you can see that it's kind of transparent. So with student grade paint you have two options. You can apply it a little thicker or you can apply two coats to it. Let it dry and then apply another coat. All right, for our shadow on this one, back to that small pointy brush, and I'm actually using purple paint instead of black paint. And we're just giving a hint that we have these cliffs that are creating a depth and these shadows on these rock formations. And when I went to art school, we were taught to never use black in our mixture, but to use other colors. So just kind of continuing that trend and having you guys use purple instead of black. Now we're gonna use yellow paint and kind of give a bit of a highlight on the opposite side, opposite area of where you put the purple. And this is giving the indication of where the light is coming from, that the sun is creating a highlight on this rock formation. And we're just gonna repeat this process as we kind of move forward in each rock section. We're gonna add our raw sienna base color then we'll come in with the pointy brush and add our purple and then our yellow highlight. And we're gonna do this for each section. Again, that yellow usually kind of hangs out on that left-hand side and the top of our cliffs, where our purple is gonna hang out on the right-hand side and the bottom of our, cl our cliffs, because that's where the shadow is forming. There we go with that purple. And again, still doing that, practicing that wet on wet blending method. So you don't want to move your brush a whole lot. You're still keeping some of that density, that darkness of the purple, but it is changing a little bit as it mixes with that raw sienna. Again, remember to get out of your chair, look at your painting from about three to 10 feet away and notice how it looks different from that distance compared to two feet in front of you while you're painting. And no matter what you paint or what creative thing you do, get in the habit of learning to look at 
anything creative that you do or any painting that you do from that distance. Because generally the normal viewing distance is 10 to 20 feet away from something. All right, doing good. Just added the, adding the highlights to this third rock formation. And then again, we're going to be doing the same thing on that last rock formation. This is coming along very, very nicely. I'm so proud of you for painting at home. And again, this is just such a good and easy painting for my first time painters. You're just getting comfortable with your tools and the process of painting. Again, adding those last little highlights of yellow, coming in with that dark shadow of the purple and mixing it in with the raw sienna. Breathe, you're doing a great job. All right, make sure you pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're gonna be moving into putting the foliage. You do want your paint to fully dry, uh, but we're moving into the foliage and I'm taking that green and mixing it with some of that raw sienna. We're gonna put our tree trunks in and then we'll put the foliage on our tree. And I think there's a few spots that we're gonna just kind of put bushes that are hanging out on the cliffs. This is completely optional. You do not have to do this step if you don't want these on your cliffs. Um, if you prefer palm trees, check out one of my other vid videos on how to draw the palm trees, but you can switch this up and make it your own. All right, so now we're gonna, you're gonna clean your brush. We're gonna use white paint and put the white caps of our waves in. And basically you'll see as soon as my hand's out of the way, I am holding the brush kind of perpendicular and just perpendicular to the canvas and just using the tip of the brush to create the white caps. Um, right above where we were putting that darker blue in each of our water sections. So by putting it right above that darker blue, it's creating a nice kind of shadow underneath the white caps. So again, putting these white caps on top of the darker blue to create that illusion of depth and that illusion that we have waves rolling into the shore. Same thing as we move into the shore, putting those white caps on the edges, overlapping, kind of covering up any of those black lines that may still be showing. And again, remember to look at your painting from that distance to see where maybe you might want to add more white caps than what I have on my painting. Or maybe you see another area where you're like, hey, this might look good here. Trust your instincts and apply it where you feel inclined to apply it. All right, so now we're going back to the green and raw sienna. Same type of method for that we use to apply the white caps of the waves. We're gonna do the same thing for the foliage of our tree. Basically just kind of holding that brush perpendicular and tapping the ends of the bristles on the canvas. All right, and you can make your tree on here as full and healthy as you want it to be, or it can be a more sparing, um, maybe a winter tree, you can add as much foliage to your tree as you like. And then here I'm actually just adding a few little spots around the cliffs as if the foliage is, some of the ground foliage is hugging the cliffs. Completely optional and your call of how much or how little you put on your cliffs. You're doing a great job. Again, I'm using student grade paint, so if you need to go back and apply it a little thicker for more opacity, go right ahead and do that. You guys are doing a great job. I'm so proud of you for painting at home. All right. So again, you should be very proud of yourself. Keep on painting. And uh, until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and that you feel a little bit more comfortable with the blending process and with mixing your paint and that hopefully it's not as scary as it maybe it was before you started painting. Um, as you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me, Paint with Lovejoy or email me paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. It is 
through your feedback, your comments, your pictures, your emails that keep this course going or keep this channel going and give me motivation to make more videos. So let me know how you're doing at home. Again, when you're ready to kind of take the next step in your painting process and paint something that you care about, paint your pet. Check out my main website, paintwithlovejoy.com and pick your appropriate color for your pet, sign up for the course and go through the process. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm always honored when you guys choose my videos to go through and the kind of the results that you have. So again, thanks so much for all of your support. Have a great day. Cheers. Wait for the plane. As we wait for the plane.